In this video, we're going to be talking about something called differential equations and something called slope fields. Uh, but first, a differential equation is an equation in terms of x and y, and it involves the variables x, y, and then derivatives of y. And this can be first, second, third derivatives, and so on. Uh, so an example would be 2xy prime minus 3y equals 0. This is a differential equation. Uh, we have a derivative of y, and then the rest of the equation is in terms of x and y. So if we are wanting to um, solve this differential equation, right, we want to determine whether our given equation, y equals cosine of x, is going to be a solution to this differential equation. So what this differential equation says is uh, y double prime plus y equals zero. So we basically want to know if I take the uh, second derivative of this and add it to the first derivative, will it be zero? So let's go ahead and try uh, taking a look at that. So y prime is, so the derivative of cosine is the opposite of the sine function. The second derivative, so the derivative of sine is cosine and it's minus, so it's gonna be negative cosine of x. And now we want to test is y uh, plus y double prime equal to zero. So we know the second derivative is the opposite of the cosine, so opposite of cosine of x, plus y, which is cosine of x. Is this equal to zero? It is in fact equal to zero. So this is a solution. That would be a solution to this differential equation. So let's take a look at this one. So let's give this one a try. So first, what is the first derivative? So y prime is equal to, so we're gonna have to use some chain rule here because the inside function is not just an x. So it's derivative of the outside leaving the inside alone times the derivative of the inside. So it's negative e to the negative x. Uh, take the second derivative. So it's again gonna be e to the negative x times a negative, and then it's already negative, right? Because it's the opposite of the derivative of this. So it's just going to be uh, e to the negative x here. So we can go ahead and add these two together. So add y, the original function, with the second derivative, and does that equal zero? So is uh, e to the negative x, which we have for y double prime, plus e to the negative x, which we have for y, is this equal to zero? Uh, well, we end up with two e to the negative x, and e to the x is actually never equal to zero, so this is never true, uh, so this does not work. This would not be a solution to our differential equation. Okay. And let's try this last one. Here we have y equals c times the sine of x, and in this case, c just represents a constant. So the first derivative is going to be c times the cosine of x, and then the second derivative is going to be, the derivative of cosine is the opposite of sine, so we can take the opposite of c times the sine of x. And let's go ahead and add the second derivative to the first derivative. So the second derivative is the opposite of c times the sine of x plus the original function y, which is c times the sine of x. Is this equal to zero? Well, these end up canceling out, so this works out. So you will see that this here is a solution. Y equals cosine of X is a solution. Y equals E to the negative X was not a solution to this particular differential equation. Okay. So in this, in this last example, we weren't actually solving a differential equation. We were just trying to check if what we were given was a solution. Now, sometimes solving differential equations using analytic methods can be very difficult. And often the techniques that are required for this are beyond the scope of this course. You might learn them in an upper division differential equations course, or you'll learn them in um, other, other classes. However, even though we're not necessarily able to find an analytic solution, we're not able to solve this uh, algebraically or using calculus techniques, there's still a lot that we can learn about a differential equation through something, uh, through a graphical approach using something called a slope field or a directional field. So basically what slope fields and directional fields are, are um, a group of points or at a group of points, we basically sketch what the slope of our function would be of, or the slope of the tangent line would be at that point. And it kind of gives us a direction of, or a, an idea of what the 
curve would look like. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So in this example, we are given this dif uh, differential equation, the derivative of y with respect to x equals the opposite of x over 2y. So this is going to describe uh, the slopes at all ordered pairs x, y. So if you were trying to say, find the slope at one, zero, you would plug one in for x, zero in for y, and this would tell you what the slope should be there, okay? So what do we have in this situation? So A is asking us to skep, uh, sketch a slope field of the differential equation on the coordinate plane below. And then in part B, we're gonna try and sketch a possible solution to the differential equation. Uh, so there's a couple ways. Uh, the way that I like to start this is to get a sense of what's happening at any key features. So what happens if I make x zero? What happens if I make y zero, right? So if I make x zero, actually let's do it in this color. If I make x zero, so anywhere that the x coordinate is zero, this whole thing is zero. So we actually have a slope on this of zero at all of these points on the y-axis, right? So the slope here is zero always. Um, now what happens if y is zero? So if my y value is zero? Well, I end up with something over zero and that's an undefined value, right? And generally that's signified with a vertical uh, tangent line, vertical tangent lines. So we have vertical tangent lines here. Now at zero, zero, we actually end up with something that is indeterminate because we get zero over zero. So we don't really know what the slope is at that point. But we know that along the x-axis, we have vertical tangent lines because we have an undefined slope there. We know that uh, along the y-axis, we have horizontal tangent lines because the slope would be zero. And what about at all of the intermediate points? So if I were to look at one, one, what would be the slope of my tangent line? Well, you can literally just plug in one, one. So when x is one and y is one, my slope is negative one half. So negative one half is gonna be something like this here. So we always, uh, when we're trying to sketch a slope field, we wanna make our, um, our lines that we draw relatively short, because remember that slope is only that value for a very small period of time. Even if I were only to go over like a quarter of a unit, the slope would be dramatically different. So we wanna try and keep it as small as, uh, as short as possible, while still kind of showcasing the behavior of our slope at that point. So I'm gonna do all of them for when x is one. So when x is one and y is two, that's gonna give me negative one fourth. So it's even uh, shallower here. So it's like maybe something like this now. So this is negative one half, that's negative one fourth. If I go into the negative values, when x is one and y is negative one, that's gonna be one over positive, right? Positive two now, so it's gonna be a positive one half slope. So it's gonna look something like, whoops, something like this. And then um, down here, if I plug in negative two for y, it's going to be a positive one fourth. So it's even shallower here, something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and do the negatives. So when x is negative one and y is one, that's gonna give me positive one half. So it'll look something like this. When x is uh, negative one and y is positive two, it's gonna be positive one fourth, so something like this. And we can see that it's sort of uh, mirroring what we have on this other side. So when I plug in negative one, negative one, that's gonna be a negative divided by a, ne or a positive now divided by a negative. So that's gonna be a negative one half here. And then plugging in negative two for y is gonna give me negative one fourth here, like this. Now if we go into the twos, when x is two and y is one, then two over two is gonna be one. So the slope is gonna be negative one here. Sorry, negative one, like this. Uh, when x is two and y is two, that's gonna be negative one half, right? Because it's gonna be two over four and it's gonna be negative, so that's gonna be negative one half, something like that. Um, at two negative one, so when x is two, y is negative one, so that's gonna be a positive two over a negative two, but it's the opposite of that, so it's gonna be positive, slope of positive one here. And then this slope, when I plug in two negative two, is going to be a positive one half. And looking in the negative 
uh, values here when x is negative 2 and y is positive 2. Or sorry, x is negative 2, y is 1. Uh, that's going to give me a positive 1 here. And then it's going to be a positive 1 half. I will have a negative 1 here and then a negative 1 half. So you can kind of get a sense of what the slopes are. And if you had to take a guess, right, if you had to take a guess of this, what the graph would be, um, I'm guessing it's probably going to be something like a circle or something like a an ellipse, perhaps, right? Um, because we can see that we have vertical tangent lines here. We have horizontal tangent lines up here. And... Uh, so it kind of looks like it's kind of going around, like the slopes are going around in a circle kind of like this. But they're a little steeper here. I think if it was going to be a circle, there would be ones on these uh, these values here. And that would give us more of like a, an actual circle here. Now, if we wanted to be a little bit more accurate, we could also find the slopes at the intermediate points here, right? At the like halves and such. And that's just going to help us draw an even better picture to get a better sense of what our slope field is would look like and what the behavior of our curve is. But this gives us a, a, an okay sense. And so in part B, it wants us to sketch a possible solution to the curve, um, a, a possible, sorry, solution curve to this differential equation that goes through the point zero, 01. So we wanna go through this point here. So at this point, we have a horizontal tangent. So we're gonna have something like this. Uh, and we're gonna kinda just try and follow the trend. So we can see that uh, it gets a little bit steeper as I'm getting like this is getting shallower as my y values get bigger. It's getting steeper as my y values get closer to uh, closer to zero. And then at y equals zero, we have a vertical tangent. So it's going to do something like like this probably. And I do think it's going to end up being an ellipse, right? It's going to look something like this. And as I come down, I can see that my slopes for my tangent lines are changing like this. I'm gonna probably have some symmetry and hit the at uh, x-axis, the y-axis there at negative one, and come around here like this. So I'll probably get something like this, and I believe that would be a sketch of a potential solution curve that goes through the point here at zero one. So for this example, I want you to try and fill out the um, the slope field here on your own. So in this case, it's only x squared. There's no y's in this. So your slopes are going to be entirely de dependent on the value of x. So try and fill out your uh, sketch the slope field. And then we'll come back together when you've finished that. And we'll try and sketch our possible solution curve. So go ahead and pause the video and sketch your slope field. All right, so now that you've sketched your slope field, it should look something like this. Um, everything that lies on the x-axis has a slope of zero, right? When we plug in when x is zero, we get zero. So all of these values are zero. Um, for x equaling one, all of our slopes should be one. For x equaling two, all of our slopes should be four. Uh, at negative one, our slopes again would be one because negative one squared is one. And at negative two, our slopes again should be four. So if we take a look at a um, possible solution curve, we want this one to go through the origin. So it's gonna go through here. So we're gonna have a horizontal tangent line here, horizontal tangent line here. Um, and we've seen that like as X gets closer to one, my tangent line gets, um, my the slope of my tangent line is gonna be one on here. And it's getting steeper as I'm moving off to the right. And then as I move off to the left, it's also getting steeper, but it looks like it's gonna be going um, down this way. Now, the reason why I know it's not coming in this way is because this is going against, right? If I'm going like this, I'm going against the value of my uh, of my slope. So I can see that clearly my slopes are down like this as I'm going in the negative direction of x. And as I'm going in the positive direction of x, my slopes are clearly going up. So my graph is going to be increasing on all values of x because it has positive slopes everywhere. And it looks like it goes from really steep to shallow back to really steep. So I'm guessing it's going to look something like this. And we're just trying to get a rough sketch here 
um, of a potential solution curve in this situation. Now, this is the equation of our differentially uh, of our derivative essentially, right? It's the derivative of y with respect to x. And if we were to integrate this, we would be looking at a cubic function. So this slope feel or this uh, solution curve should be um, about what you would expect for something that would be a cubic. And so this is how you use slope fields to get a sense of what a potential solution curve would look like in a, a graphical uh, situation. Now, like we said, not all uh, differential equations can be solved analytically, but we can still try and look at the slope fields and direction fields to get a sense of what the shape of our curve would be.